the, this is the fourth year of Detroit High Water Polo Program. Um, in its most recent, uh, in its most recent version. In fact, the previous version we have one member <coughs> of the of the Detroit High team, which would have been about 1995 or 94. Uh, John Jackson here. Please stand up, John. He was he was a, he was from the old Troy High Water Polo team. Fresh came back from Hillsdale College to do filming for tonight. Thank you. Um, we had a great year this year. Uh, our record was 15 and 27, which on the surface some people might say, well, we you know we didn't do that well, but in fact we had a great season. Uh, and, and those of you who, who have been in the water polo program for the last four year, years will understand this. Um, we won 15 games this year. We won more games than any other Troy High water polo team has ever won. The year before, the team won 18 games, but of that 18, most of those games were won as a combined Troy and Athens team. Um, also, our JV had the best had the best. Uh, record that we've ever had, and that was we won, we were five and four in our JV games. And when you look at the teams we played in, in the JV, you, you see that the couple of the losses were against teams which were basically playing their varsity uh, <coughs> team. So we had a great JV season. Uh, just some statistics. I'm always always big on statistics. Uh, we averaged ten goals a game, and ten goals a game is is excellent in water polo. Um, it was we were down one goal a game from last year. Last year's team averaged 11, but we we had 10, so we had an excellent uh, um, record. We finished. We played in seven tournaments this year, more than we've ever played before. And in those seven tournaments, we finished fourth five times. We finished second. We finished. Um, I'm saying we finished fifth four times. We finished fourth twice, and we finished third once. And and of course the. The regionals and the county uh, <coughs> tournaments were the were the ones that we were um, shooting for. We finished third in the county and fifth in the regionals. Last year we finished second in the county and fourth in the regionals. So we uh, we had a great season. Um, we were a little shy of where we were last year, but we had a very <coughs> very young team. Last year's team was almost exclusively seniors, particularly when we played as a combined team. It was almost all seniors, and this year we did a great job. We had a very young team. We were the youngest team in when we played all these uh, games. And next year, we're going to have a fine season. The other thing was we did is we chose a, a very difficult schedule to uh, play. We had uh, we played 25 games this past year against the top teams in the state of Michigan, and our record was four and 21, which. On the surface, doesn't doesn't sound that great, but when you consider we beat Huron and Pioneer, it was a it was a, a great season. Um, and the out of state teams we played were the best teams in Ohio, Illinois, and Pennsylvania. So we we really did have a have a great season. I summarized in the program some of the highlights for the season, and uh, if you refer to those. Um, I, I combined them and I put them into two basic categories. I'm calling uh, the highlights the firsts and uh, and the mosts. The firsts were we. This is the first year we tried the team dinners, and I think it really helped. Uh, really helped the team get closer together. Uh, it was the first year we had two overnight tournaments in uh, Grand Haven as well as in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. It was our first. It was our first hosting of the Open County Championships, which was a major undertaking and. And the parents of the team did a fantastic job. Uh, we had our first all-county selections. <coughs> We've never had all-county selections previously. We also had our first all-region selections. Again, another first. Uh, like I said earlier, we had our first wins over Huron and the first wins over Pioneer, which those of you who are new to water polo um, to understand is Pioneer and Huron have won basically the state championship every year that's been contested in the state of Michigan except for a couple years when our former coach Fred Carter was at Groves and they won. So in fact the state championship has always been won in water polo by a school from the eastern side of the state. Most, uh, we played the most games we've ever had. We had 42 this, this season. 
Um, we had the largest team we've ever had. 18 players finished the season. 23 played at least part of the season. We had more first-year players than we've ever had. 12 first-year players. We had the most players scoring. I think this is, this is one of the really great statistics, one of the things I'm most proud of. 18 different players scored this season for our team. We played the most JV games, nine. We had the most JV wins, uh, five. And also, we had a very important statistic, the most wins we've ever had in a season over Athens, three wins by a combined <laughs> score of 54 to 18. I mean, I think the average score was 18 to 6 in our games against Athens. We'll try to schedule more next year. Um, we also had some other important uh, uh, mosts. Most goals by a freshman, 70 goals this year by a freshman, the best we've ever done. Most goals by a sophomore, 36 goals. Most goals by a senior, and most goals in the season, 136 goals. The uh, most varsity letter winners, 16, and the most scholar athletes, um, six. One other thing is we also had the most all-state players. We had three all-state players this year, two academic all-state and one um, regular all-state player. So overall, we had a great, great season, and, and from an from a in-review perspective, I'm very proud of what everybody accomplished. Um, what I'd like to do um, right now is one of the real reasons we had the success that we did was the, was the outstanding efforts of all of you in the room. Uh, the parents in, in this team did just an outstanding job. Everything I asked people to do, they did in an excellent fashion. Um, all, of, all, of, all the players should be proud of the contribution their parents made to the team. Um, we have some uh, gifts for the parents, but I just want to I just want to recognize you for all the all the things that you did. Um, for example, this evening, the beautiful banquet. Um, we have Denise Ellis and <coughs> Ted Thomas. Done a beautiful job tonight. Thank you very much. We have. Uh, we had the Oakland County Championships that Al Johnson was our uh, meet director, tournament director for all our home games. A fantastic job. Kim Chung did a beautiful job on the concessions with all her, her help from everybody on the team contributing. Um, Greg Benatelli, I mean, I'm sorry, Matt, Greg Benatelli on scoring. Um, Don Thomas. Beautiful job on announcing. Also, the beautiful banner that we had, which, by the way, I got to admit, we I got to tell you, we got a lot of compliments in our at, at the state or at the regional tournament about our ban our uh, a banner. Also, uh, um, at the JV tournament at uh, Pioneer, it's the best banner. We saw them all. We went over there to see the state tournament. This is the best one in the state. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, and, and also Andy and Julie were were great helpers at the concessions at the the drivers. Greg Benatelli organized, did a beautiful job on the transportation to all the games. Did a fantastic job. Help from the McDonald's and the Drews, the Chungs, the Painters, Javazians, Ellis, the Thomases, Martones, Johnsons, and Oaks. We thank all of you for your real help getting people to back and forth to the games. We didn't lose help. Jeff Drews. Uh, for each for each person, I have a little packet. In this packet, uh, there's awards for each person. Also, uh, there's statistics for the season and <coughs> team. And uh, Tiv, and determined player, uh, played much larger than he is out there. Quick and strong. His egg beater, he can stay up longer, I think, than anybody I've seen this year. And, and one of the true workhorses of the team. He was a true competitor. Um, he also was recognized as an all-county uh, honorable mention player, as well as all-regional honorable mention player, John Chung.
Paul Jackson played 30 games this year. In fact, there was there was 14 kids on the team who played more games than Paul this year. Um, he had 136 goals. He had perfect attendance. Uh, as co-captain of the team, I can honestly say that he's the best player in the state. He's the fastest, biggest, most prolific scorer that I've ever heard of in the state of Michigan. He scored 270 goals over the last two seasons. He played and started more games than any other player in Troy High history. He leads in virtually every offensive category that he can be at. And um, one of the things that one of the things that made me proudest this year was how Paul stepped up when you know we had another captain on the team that quit and and really let this team down. And um, it, Paul knew that, and he didn't let that deter him. He made every effort this year to do the absolute best that he could. Um, like the boy said, he came back at uh, he came back down there in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, with four stitches in his head. And he comes back in, and he, first of all, he almost gets undressed on the deck in front of everybody. He's so pumped up right in, in the pool. And then, he, and then he comes over, and I said, did the doctor say it was okay to get in the water? And he said, oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I thought that was kind of odd. But he, by that time, he was already in the water, and he had scored a couple goals. So he finished that game out, and by that time, the Novocaine was starting to wear off from the stitches, and when I asked him, what did that doctor say? He said, I don't think I should be playing the next game. So, um, it's been a real honor and a pleasure to coach Paul this year. Um, it will, he, both of our seniors will be very difficult to replace next year, but um, I want all of you guys that are here to remember the thing that, that I liked best about Paul was that when we were at practice, he was there in lane six, working harder than anybody on the team. And that's why you score 270 goals in, in two seasons. It's by working hard and doing your absolute best. Paul was named all county, all region, and all state for the second time. I also have, I have some additional awards to present tonight. The first, the first award tonight is a special award um, we've given out the last couple years. We call it the Rookie of the Year Award. It's to the, to the most outstanding first year player on the team. <coughs> John Thomas set a record this year scoring more goals than any other player has ever scored at Troy High in their first year as a fre and, and as a freshman. So, Jonathan Thomas, I give you the Rookie of the Year award. award I give is uh, is actually from Troy High School. It's called the Booster Award. And I'll, I'll uh, read the, uh, the official uh, description of this. This award goes to the individual who contributes to the team in a unique way. In spirit, attitude, desire, all those things. He's an unsung hero. And 
this year our booster award winner is Lee Johnson. <laughs> is a award that uh, we've had uh, different names in the past, but uh, I think I think it's important that uh, we name it the most dedicated player award. And this this is an award we give to the player who works hard every practice, every game, and is a big contributor to the team. This year, we had several players with perfect attendance at practice. <coughs> this year's award winner for most dedicated player is Chad King. returning player who's had the biggest improvement one year to the next. This year, our most improved player is Mike Jackson. Hey. Mike set a record for goals by a sophomore with 36. His play was improved dramatically this season. And I'm glad he didn't fall down on the way up to the court. <laughs> He's improving on his walk, too. Good job. The next award goes to the most valuable defensive player. And this, this is a really important award, and it's one that, that um, I know uh, Paul, for example, uh, received last year and he received it with great pride. Um, it's It goes to that person who consistently plays um, the best on the team on defense. And that award this year goes to Nikhil Oak. Player, you have most valuable offensive player. Uh, this award is is going to a player who consistently came up big in our important games. Uh, he's a player who's who's been a big contributor to this team in the past, and I expect to be a big contributor in the future. This award goes this year to Chris Thomas. <laughs> A, this is the senior award. This this award goes to an outstanding senior on the team. All right, and this year our senior award winner is John Chung. considered to be the outstanding athlete of the team. Um, and this year's Colt of the Year Award goes to Paul Jackson.
for for all your help this year i think we can honestly say that the troy high water polo program has never been better and the future is never look brighter the seniors that are leaving have left a fine tradition for the underclassmen to to emulate in the future they're they're big shoes to fill but we have a lot of guys with a lot of a lot of potential they can step up and do that and i'm really looking forward to the future of the troy high water polo program we have the largest most talented group of underclassmen that we've ever had at troy high and and i think it's one of the most talented group of underclassmen at any school in the state there was no team that we played against that had the quality of freshmen and sophomore players top to bottom that we did it's hard to tell with a pioneer and john because they have so many kids you don't even know exactly who's going to be a freshman and sophomore who's coming back but i can tell you that with the exception of those teams we get the strongest group in the state i think i think we've established a pretty clear formula for success also with most of you guys being on swimming for mr o'brien this year you have a real opportunity to improve your swimming i think we all saw that tape in the beginning of the year that there's a real natural relationship between swimming and water polo and each season helps the next season i think all you guys are swimming this year are going to be much better swimmers than playing water polo i think all you guys when you come back in the fall are going to be much better water polo players after swimming just because they complement each other so much we've got a we've got an excellent chance at a spring water polo program i think it's uh it's about a 95 percent sure um thing with uh with girls water polo getting established at troy um we have we have with our point set of sales we have the opportunity to take advantage of the navy water polo camp in the summer it's going to be a great camp several of the players have gone in the past i can tell you mike in particular his improvement after going to the navy camp has been just <coughs> phenomenal and i think it's going to help every person on this team um, so i would really encourage you to to, to look closely at participating in the Navy water polo camp. Um, there's there's also the potential of playing at Club Wolverine in Arbor in the summer. We've done that in the past. Um, I'm not sure it, it, the, the travel back and forth is a bit of a problem, but if at all possible and you can do that, it's a great way to learn. You're playing with the absolute very best players in the state with Club Wolverine. It's coached by the Ann Arbor Pioneer coach, one of the best coaches in the state. And they have great players, and they play tournaments all around, uh, in fact, all around the United States, from, literally from uh, Maryland to California. Um, swim this summer at your summer clubs. Uh, you can't swim too much. Also, uh, swim. Uh, I haven't talked to Mr. McCrudden, but I'm hopeful that Mr. McCrudden will have a swim program this summer at Troy High, like he did last year. Do that. Uh, and we'll be ready next year to really make an impact on on the water polo scene here in Michigan. You guys should all be congratulated on working very hard this year, having a great season. I'm very proud of each and every one of you. You did a great job, and um, you really deserve a lot of credit for working so hard. Um, one of the things we started out the season. On uh, everyone voting, uh, we have come of the unanimous decision. Um, we'll be having three captains next year. Um, <laughs> in, in no particular order. Um, Chris Thomas. <laughs> Dan Ellis. And Ed Myers. Ed Myers. <laughs> and Dominic said I'm just going to wing it and improvise. But, um, this is kind of entitled like my, my old to Troy High Water Polo and to my father for everything. Um, for for those who don't know, the, this team was started in 1996, um, kind of randomly. Um, my first day of school, my freshman year, um, I heard an announcement on the announcement saying, anyone interested in playing water polo, come to me tomorrow. And the next day, um, Fred Carter, who is a, who is an excellent coach from Grove, decided to start a team at Troy High. Um, and so we, I went to this meeting, and I was very interested in playing. and. Um, 
the next few days we had practices and everything was going good. Um, unfortunately, Fred kind of forgot to talk about the, to the administration about having this water bulletin. <laughs> so that was kind of a problem. And uh, this leads into the importance of my father on this team. Um, the, the team was extremely uh, disorganized and uh, nothing, no one, the, the school, the school didn't know that we were having a team and they, they had to prove everything and my dad kind of jumped in and made sure everything, we had meetings with the administrators, Fred, he was kind of, he was kind of like the glue that stuck the team and the administration together and with, without him in the beginning of the team, they would it would just not have started. Um, anyways, freshman year went on, um, we lost every single game <laughs> except for one very last game and with an incredible amount of talent that just was completely undeveloped. Um, my sophomore year rolled around and um, although they had the same kind of problem with administration, um, let's just say Fred wasn't wasn't one for doing things the right way I guess you say. And it sounds kind of mean but it's true. Um, and again my, my father um, you know stepped in and he made sure everything was going good. He made sure all the you know all the insurances and all the liabilities with the team it was all right and sophomore went around and um, we we again with a very talented team we kind of we kind of we got better we got better but we still didn't really do very much um, then last year kind of rolled around and um, last year we had we had three seniors and uh, three juniors dying <coughs> myself and someone else and um, with pretty much an eight-man team we we managed to make it to states um, we beat Sea Home at regionals. Um, they were a much weaker Sea Home, but we still beat them. And um, it was an ac excellent season. Um, but then at the banquet, um, Fred, who had been a coach for the past few years, um, pretty much told us that he would not be, not be coaching for next year. And um, although this really wasn't much of a shock because he had had problems in the past, um, it was going to be extremely difficult to find a coach for the team. And, um, it's not like they're just, you know, water polo coaches, you know, all over the city of Troy and Oakland County. So um, my, my father took the initiative to um, attempt to hire a coach to find, he, you know, search the whole United States of America and put out applications on, on websites and in papers and everything. He couldn't find any, anyone to, to commit to it. So um, in the back of his mind, he was always thinking, hey, you know, if it came down to it, I'm going to step forward and coach this team so you know this this team doesn't become extinct. And that's exactly what happened. Um, he he um, <coughs> went to Mrs. Hammond and he accepted the job and uh, he didn't just say yeah I'll take the job all right. He really he really went out of his way to learn all about the sport. He's never played water polo and he's never been much of a swimmer either. That's <laughs> <laughs> I was I was joking to him at the uh, at the regional tournament that Although we were kind of disappointed about um, not making states, if we did make states, we would have probably pushed my dad in, and you know we would we needed a lifeguard in that duty. So <laughs> <laughs> just to put it, in, you know. So, so, so been in the show. Yeah, but he, he, he's going to take swim lessons for next year. But regardless, um, um, but regardless, uh, he he uh, really went out of his way to learn about the sport, and I guess you could call him a student of the game, even though he didn't really play. Um, he ordered like all these videos from um, Mike Nikowski, who was the United States, he was the United States water polo coach. He called him up on the phone. This is the, this is like the equivalency of like a Phil Jackson in, of basketball, like, the greatest coach in the world. My dad just gives him a call and talks to him. Um, <laughs> talks to him for a few hours out in California about everything, and um, he, he he really he really learned about the game. And when when the first practice rolled around, he seemed to be extremely knowledgeable and. Uh, and instead of just having complete anarchy in the pool with no one really knowing what they, they were doing, he kind of, I mean, he, he held us together and he really went out of, out of his way to make everything, um, make everything right. And although although I consider him a great coach, um, more importantly, I consider him a great great man. I mean, regardless of the fact that he's my father, he's an excellent um, role model to the kids. I mean, he, was, he went out of his way to take this job. He wakes up every morning at 4.30 and goes out to GM and does his thing, you know. He always, he, he left two hours early during the polo season just to make sure he'd get home in time to be on time and coach us. And he, he was always on the computer looking up stuff, making, doing stats, um, you know, doing everything, you know, making the practices the next day, conversing with Michael and I about, you know, what went right, what went wrong, 
you know, how are we going to prove this? Um, and he, he truly went out, I mean, he, he went well above and beyond what um, the, the protocol waterfall coach had to do. And um, just for that, I'd just like to thank um, formerly my father for coaching this team. And with the, with the talent on the team, you know, these freshmen and sophomores, which are just incredible, it's good to know that they have a promising future that is there for them. Because there are times when, I, speaking for John and myself, when we really didn't know exactly you know, what was happening. And these, the, the, this team will make stakes in the future. There will be you know, all Americans in this, in this room. And, um, and because of my father, this talent will finally be harnessed and cropped. And um, we, we have, a, we have a, pr a presentation that Yogi Yogi went out and we kind of got him a kind of a more of a uh, yeah a uh, what's the word sentimental gift. Um, since